Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. After reviewing the original, which I bought the Blu-ray that's in 4K Master last week, followed by the bland, boring, generic remake that came out this year of Pet Cemetery, I decided to finally review the sequel to the original Pet Cemetery 2. Now this film has gotten a bad rap over the years, yet yeah, critics had slashed it completely. It actually got a 4.8 on IMDb, got 24% on Rotten Tomatoes, yeah, thinking that this is not the best sequel that they had to offer, sadly. Um, which is a shame, because I thought this was a criminally underrated sequel that basically plays it in a whole different story here. Like, now, Stephen King wanted his name to be removed since he was the one who uh, wrote the novel and wrote the screenplay of the original. That he didn't want to be associated with the sequels, yet alone his film adaptations uh, during the time. Especially that he had a, uh, a lawsuit against the studio New Line Cinema for The Lawnmart Man, yeah, with Pierce Brosnan and Jay Fahey which was an awesome movie, yeah, an awesome uh, virtual reality uh, thriller, but he didn't want to be involved, and I mean, they, they did it without his permission, and maybe he didn't want his name to be becoming more of a, a big marketing campaign or so, so that's why. But of course, Stephen King had continued to go on with all the mini-series that follows, and, and of course we had other films joining in. So, he's still popular, no doubt about it. Um, also, Paramount uh, was very interested in doing a sequel to this because of their success with Pet Cemetery, the 1989 original, that they invited the director, Mary Lambert. Um, her idea was that after she returned to direct, she wanted to have a, a concept where where they focus on the central character, Ellie Creed, the only survivor of the original, where she becomes a teenager. And this is where we follow a, another story about what happened. But the studio wasn't interested. So instead, they decided to cast new characters, uh, and the story had to be written completely differently and they actually had a protagonist to join in and that's when they cast uh, Edward Furlong from Terminator 2 Judgment Day you know trying to have his rise to fame for Hollywood and so that way you know he can actually have a breakthrough role through other films because I know he later went on to do another horror film called uh, Brain Scan which is a uh, a virtual reality uh, horror movie, and he also went on to other stuff too, as it follows. And they were also going to get uh, Anthony Edwards, um, you know, who's from uh, the TV show ER, which, interesting enough, his character kind of resembles to it. But uh, he was also in the movie uh, Top Gun when he played Goose. And he was also in Miracle Mile. Yeah, that film. We also got Darlene Fugel from Once Upon a Time in America. Interesting enough, um, there's actually a scene in the movie where they were actually watching the film. And that's where we spotted her. Um, Clancy Brown, who's a voice actor, but he's also a great actor too on his own. He, he was in the movie Highlander, where he played uh, Kugon. Uh, he also went on to play uh, uh, Byron Hadley in The Shawshank Redemption, yeah, based on the Stephen King novel, which is a prison drama, and a, a fascinating one at that. Also, uh, the sci-fi action movie. Starship Troopers, where he played Charles Zim. <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, he did do some voice acting for shows such as uh, Transformers, for instance. Yeah, among others. But he's a very good actor. So, basically, about um, a young boy who has a mother who's an actress and a father who's a veterinarian, and till suddenly tragedy hits, and then moves to a new town. Meets a new friend and you know Fiends, which learns that he actually had a a stepfather who was who's a who's an asshole and then also balls a dog that he had which led to something which also focused on the story behind uh, the mimic burial ground that was happening. So, let's start with the review. Stars Edward Furlong, Anthony Edwards, Clancy Brown, Jared Weston, Jason McGuire, who went on to do the film, get this, Leap of Faith, which came out the same year as this movie, and Forrest Gump, which makes you wonder, whatever happened to that guy? Yeah, I mean, he's still alive, but he hasn't done any movies after that, and it is a shame. Uh, Darlene uh, Fugal, you know, she was a great actress, which sadly she passed away. Yeah, Lisa Waltz, um, from the film adaptation of a Neil Simon play called Bright and Breed's Memoirs, yeah, the one with uh, uh, Jonathan Silverman. And Sarah Trigger. It's written by Richard Alden. If you're familiar with that name, he actually went on to write the TV series uh, with Bruce Campbell, The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. Yeah, very awesome show, a cult favorite. Uh, he also went on to do um, Journey to the Center of the Earth uh, from 2008 with Brendan Fraser, Josh uh, Hutcherson, and Anna Friel. Uh, which they later went on to do the sequel, which Josh Hutchison returns, but with uh, Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock. So, yeah. Yeah, Journey to the, the Mysterious Island. <laughs> yeah. um, I guess he went on to write other stuff, too. But, but he took over for Stephen King. And it's directed by Mary Lambert, who previously directed the original Pet Cemetery, and she has done a few things. The movie begins where we meet a young teenager who's 13 years old named Jeff Matthews, who's played by Edward Furlong, who lives with his mother, who's a beautiful movie actress named Renee, played by Darlan Fugal, along with his father, who's a veterinarian, you know, helping all the sick animals, like dogs and cats, rabbits and all that, named Chase, played by Anthony Edwards. Um, during that time on a movie set, uh, he was working as an assistant with his mom, where they were actually filming a horror movie. But all of a sudden, an accident occurred and, and causes the death of Renee by getting electrocuted completely so then the funeral follows and Jeff along with Chase was coping with her death that they decided to move to Lulu Maine since things were not working out in LA so they figured you know this will be a memory to to Renee since it happens to be her hometown he opens up a veterinary clinic inside Lulo, you know, that way you know, he can take care of the animals. He was being introduced by a belligerent town sheriff named Gus Gilbert, who's played by Clancy Brown, who's a complete asshole, lives with his stepson, Drew, a pudgy, shy boy, which Gus actually abuses him relentlessly. Um, also lives with uh, her mother, uh, Amanda Gilbert, 
played by Lisa Waltz. Which Jeff um, also draws an, an irk of a local bully who's a another asshole named Clyde Parker, who's played by Jared Rustin, who actually tells him a story about the Creed family, because this is how it follows the story, which basically becomes a, a ghost story, which is about them and the legend of the Mi'kmaq burial ground as they discover it you know, through the pet cemetery. But one night Gus um, actually shoots and kills Drew's beloved dog named Zowie, a husky dog, when he was disturbing all the pet rabbits that he actually collects to sell. Because he actually sets it up as a trap so that way if the dog gets near it you know, he, he's going to get uh, electrocuted or it's going to affect his nose which it did because that's why they, they had to take Zowie to the vets Drew decided to ask Jeff who uh, Clyde actually took his uh, cat that he found inside uh, the pet hospital um, which, uh, which happens to be a lot of kittens very cute kittens, all these tabby cats. So he took one and decided to keep it. Um, so uh, Drew actually asks uh, Jeff, you know, telling him about uh, that he wished Gus was dead because that's his you know, stepfather. And um, and all, and you know, they just started to make conversation and all that. But anyway. Drew actually asked him to help him bury the dog all the way up to the Mimac uh, burial ground that's past the uh, pet cemetery. Hoping that the rumors might be true because of the legend that he heard that they can actually reassure the dead. Yes, which we all know the story behind uh, the ancient uh, myth by the Rendigo. Of course. But, as it turned out, Zawi did return, but it isn't exactly what it seems, because now we begin to notice that uh, he is becoming aggressive, and also you notice his eyes was glowing, yes, in uh, bright red, so that makes it more scarier. It's kind of like Church the Cat, you know, with his eyes uh, glowing and yellow so now you know how, how scary it is but of course he is incredibly fierce too that uh, Chase decided to treat Zowie for his gunshot wound that he had which refuses to heal what was even more bizarre was that um, Zowie doesn't even have a heartbeat so Chase decided to send in a blood specimen uh, to the lab but founds out that his cells are completely deteriorated and it's no different from all these other dead canines out there yet alone animals during Halloween uh, Jeff and Drew decided to go straight to the pet cemetery you know where all the local boys yeah, including Clyde decided to, to tell all the horror stories which is of course as usual involves uh, the Creed family but that's when Gus found out that uh, Drew's mother, Amanda, allows him to go despite of being grounded. Yeah, of course, uh, Drew was dressed up as a vampire and with all that makeup and stuff. So he actually rushes straight to the cemetery and breaks up the party, which then he attacks Drew just when he's about to hit him with a grave marker. And all of a sudden, Zowie appears and attacks him and actually bitten off his neck and he dies. So, yeah, completely mauls him. So then the boys decided to bury him straight to the Mimek barrier ground, hoping that he'll come back to life. And he did. And now he's becoming completely strange, very bizarre the way he acts 
deep down of it, he's still <laughs> the same old Gus, but he's becoming exactly a uh, a stiffy, rarely speaks, and as he treats uh, Drew even better now than he was before. So he's almost like this. I mean, he really changes to become more of a a nice guy, but kind of weird. But he did indeed uh, become crude and sadistic, especially after he took a shower. He was about to have sex um, with um, Amanda. Rips off her sleeping gown. Yeah, you can see her boobs and everything. And to make matters worse, he started cooking the all the pet rabbits that he was about to sell. Yeah, I'm going to explain that later. Then, um, then Chase uh, was about to find out that Zoe actually did break out of the veterinary clinic. Yeah, just when um, the mother of two twin girls uh, were about to uh, adopt a cat, but then they began to find out that all the cats were were killed and mauled. This is before Zowie went straight to Chase's home and starts attacking him in his sleep when he had a, uh, a nightmare involving his wife, you know, Renee. Jeff also had a nightmare too involving the, his mom, Renee, which then turns into Zowie. Yeah, I mean, there's even scenes where they show Zowie inside the head of Renee and starts to attack. I mean, it was a very strange this scene. But Jeff actually encounters Clyde, about to chase him uh, down with his motorcycle and was going after him and, and just attacks him, punches him. Yeah, he punches his nose until um, Gus shows up and just when the Clyde was ready to put Jeff straight into um, his bike, his wheel, you know, spinning him around and ready to to kill him straight into it. Um, that's when Gus came and decided to do the same thing. <laughs> and yes, he did it brutally too. He kills him straight with the motorcycle wheel. So now, um, Drew suddenly uh, spotted it and decided to run away I was ready to lock the door until Gus was, was chasing after him, which he did. Yeah, he started to go inside the house, you know, takes his keys, the house key. I mean, Drew was going to shoot him, but he took his bullets, you know, with his rifle. And then he started to go all the way to the bedroom and starts to um, jump out of the window and to escape. Then he found uh, Amanda, his mom, in the car and was ready to drive off just when Gus was ready to jump on, on the hood and and chase them down all the way, which led to a very sad tragedy when Gus and his sheriff car chases them down and knocks them straight into a potato truck. Yeah, a truck that's filled with potatoes around crashes into it and and both of them died which led to their to the the heel of of Amanda you know with blood starting to drip down all covered with all those potatoes you know, through the truck so yes uh, both Amanda and Drew had died of a car crash they're in a high speed chase so after Drew's funeral Jeff decided to reanimate his mother Renee by using the Indian burial grounds power by which Gus actually exhumes uh, her corpse and brings it to Jeff at the burial ground he actually went all the way just to find it so when Chase hears that his wife's grave has been robbed, he rushes straight to Gilbert's house where he was being attacked by Zowie 
and Gus, where he winds up shooting them and killing them both. Yeah, this is where he, you know, Gus takes the, the drill. Yes, he had the drill. He actually stabs uh, the chase uh, into his shoulder, which very, very, um, very gruesome right there. But then, you know, he grabs, yeah, so Chase just grabs the gun and shoots him. Yeah, so Chase escapes and started to go back, only to find now that, um, that Renee uh, came back to life, his wife, but actually kills um, the housekeeper, uh, Marjorie Hartgrove, who's uh, played by Sir Trigger. Yeah, Renee completely stabs her with her eye and kills her. So now Jeff suddenly confronts with Renee, who's undead. Came back to life, but to make matters worse, Clyde came back to life and was ready to attack um, Jeff. And this is when he finally kills him by electrocuting him. Yeah, putting the electrical wire straight out of his mouth. And then everything caught on fire. Yeah, because uh, yeah, he got electrocuted and went straight into the uh, electrical uh, circuits and. If the entire attic caught on fire and everyone was burnt to a crisp including the Renee which she was being destroyed by flames you know her face was already been slashed completely it was ready to be burned and melt completely and then yeah she even started shrieking saying dead is better yeah which is the the famous line from the original movie, also the novel. Yeah. Cause, you know, so it's like they want to throw that in, yeah, you know, just for that particular reference. Um, yeah, it was, it was a very sad scene too. I mean, I mean, Jeff definitely want to uh, go back to his mom, Renee, and hoping things will go for the better for them. But we also know how evil she's going to be anyway. Cause... So she was definitely burned to a crisp. Along with uh, Clyde and uh, Marjorie. Already dead. So in the final scene, the, um, Chase was being recovered. Got a coke. And they decided and locks up his, his clinic. And both him and... And Jeff actually left Lulu Maine, so now they can move on with their own lives. So that's the sequel. Um, well, it's not perfect. I understand. I mean, it has its issues here and there, but I still thought it was decent for what it is. I mean, they were going for something different, and I understand. I mean. There were a lot of graphic violence in the movie, yeah, like animal cruelty that lies ahead. Like for example, you know, we see Gus actually uh, skinning all the rabbits and using it for supper, and you know, like slashing it, uh, skinning them, breaking their necks, everything. I mean, it's really fucked up. Same goes with uh, Zowie, you know, getting shot by by Gus because he was such an asshole. Yeah, from a gun room, that um, he came back to life, but actually uh, slashes three kittens, all tabby cats, and a very uh, horrifying uh, death we saw. Yeah, very disgusting. Another thing that was also gruesome was that there was a scene when Chase actually went to a taxidermist who was taking out. Uh, all the dead animals and stuff it yeah especially the the dog that's a pug where he was actually about to put in the eyes and it just uh, pops out I thought wow that was pretty creepy it really affected me <laughs> but yeah animal cruelty was really very fucked up to see on the screen so there's a lot of blood and guts here and there not, not too many but 
the of course the scene with the when uh, Gus kills uh, a Clyde with the motorcycle wheel, everything. So I had a lot of those kills. So it's definitely as graphic, um, definitely more than the original did. That um, half of those scenes were going to get cut uh, due to an R rating. I mean, because if they kept. Uh, some more of those other scenes, you know, I mean, it will probably be end up getting an NC-17 for that matter. So they don't want that. Um, yeah, believe it or not, there was a work print that uh, followed around, and they had a lot of deleted scenes and alternative scenes, like the ending with uh, Renee that's being burned into a crisp. You know, which um, there was actually a line of dialogue that that was heard and they didn't have the, the the line dead is better it just had a whole it just it was her you know just crying and at, at Jeff that they want to be together and she doesn't want to be alone yeah I agree it was it was a pretty sad scene um, and it shows I mean it's a very chilling a creepy, weird, bizarre, strange uh, sequel that we ever had. Yeah. You do feel bad for Jeff too, because you know he's been coping with his loss of of his mom. Felt very traumatic after that experience that she had while on on the movie set, which. He just never forget it, but he doesn't want this to happen anymore. Like he wants to go back to reviving her, hoping that this would, you know, bring them back and you know they'll have a family together, you know, with Chase. He got traumatized by by that accident that happened. You know that that was from the uh, electrical um, controls that that's mostly from the water because they, they poured uh, they use the water hose to, to pour all the water but then it drifts all the way down to, to the electrical uh, controls and when they knocked it out that's when everything caught on fire and she got electrocuted everything the cast was great though I mean Clint Edward Furlong was very good, uh, along with uh, Jason McGuire. Anthony Edwards um, did a fine job in the movie, uh, as well as Darlene the Fugao. Yeah, she was very beautiful. Really missed her because she was a great actress. Uh, Clancy Brown definitely uh, stole the show for me when she, when he played Gus. Because, I mean, at first, yeah, he was a complete asshole as the local sheriff. You know, and it's the stepfather of Drew, you know, treating him like shit. You know, abusing him. I mean, there's even a scene where Drew was was about to turn off the TV just to be ready for supper. But he was actually about to turn off the, the TV with the remote by shooting him. But then he just shot uh, because he knows he really hates him so bad. That um, that someday, you know, you want to get even with him. Um, but yeah, by the time he was dead and came back to life, you know, he becomes a whole different person. So he starts like cooking, uh, you know, breakfast uh, for him, along with uh, Amanda, his mom. Trying to get nice to to her and yeah, I mean, there's even a scene where he like jokes around, you know, like eating all the mashed potatoes and and all these lima beans, which he accidentally drop on, which which he accidentally drop on the floor and starts to <laughs> joke around. Yeah, <laughs> playing with his food, you know, opening his mouth and. <laughs> Yeah, just just having fun. Also, he was very nice. Uh, he actually helps uh, Jeff around. 
but deep down of it, uh, he's he's also very evil because you know he's gonna go around killing them, killing a lot of people, or helping out, or or any other. So we know how horrifying he could be. But this was a very bizarre uh, role for for Clancy Brown, but it really works. So he was the main reason what made this movie uh, impossible. Um, definitely has some impressive direction by Mary Lambert. She really did a fine job with this movie. I mean, after his success, after her success with uh, Pet Cemetery, so she continues, even though this was not exactly her attention, but still. Great writing from Richard Alden. So, some great dialogue here and there. Um, was not a big hit at the box office. Yeah, it was a flop. Only made $17.1 million. But it's a shame because I think it's a way better film than the remake that we got. No doubt about it. Way better. Um, it is available on DVD. I, I hope this movie gets a Blu-ray someday. I mean, it's a shame that the original got one, but not this one. So Paramount really need to get their act together and start releasing this. Uh, also has a great soundtrack, too. Um, yes, they did have the Ramones, but they also got, um, they got other artists, including Tracy Lords, uh, L7, you know, went, went on to do Serum Mom for this soundtrack and even um, another good song called Ride On by Lou Lox. Yeah. Really cool. So so I enjoyed it for what it's worth. As a decent decent sequel. So that's Pit Cemetery 2 and I give it three and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.